My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. It is a beautiful sunny day and it is also the 4th of May. This is the day that phase two of lockdown in Italy starts. We are officially allowed to go out further than 200 metres from our house. We're allowed to take our children and our dogs for walks. We're still not allowed to meet up with friends, but we can visit close family members too. Um, so today, instead of going out, we're going to take the cover off the swimming pool, which really needs to go because it looks awful, doesn't it? Così lo asciughiamo. Ma ha fatto apposta per questo o l'ha sì, inventato? Sì, ha fatto dopo? apposta per questo, non l'ho inventato, era ah. già comprato. Sky found a snail and it looks very uninviting. That will take a couple of weeks probably to clean up. It's much better than that plastic cover though. Now I suppose we have to clean this. that I fed the chickens this morning but I didn't get any eggs because one of them was still laying. Come out and play. Come on then. Go on then. Three eggs with a feather still attached. To let Holly control the eggs. Everything okay? Have they passed their test? Hmm. We have rather a lot of eggs. He's got his swimming trunks on, he's going to have to go in there, rather him than me. and the iMovie on it keeps crashing and freezing and blanking out bits of video and it's just not working properly so I downloaded the free trial of Final, um, what is it called? Final Cut Pro and it's doing the same thing And finally, you get to see me in a different location. We are only next door at the neighbours. Um, Carlo has offered to build them a outside bed like we have, a little hanging bed, and we're organising that. They are just discussing, <laughs> discussing which bed frame to use. I think they might do a smaller one than we did, just a single one. I've just found their strawberry patch. Yum yum. Look at the size of that one. <laughs> Right, they have a fantastic view of Positano. Somewhere down there. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Random things you find in other people's gardens. Hmm. I am rather lost at the moment. I think I'm going in the right direction, but I'm not 100% sure. There seems to be a little pathway here, so I'm going to follow it. And I've found it. stunning down here. It smells amazing. These are all um, broccoli, leafy broccoli plants. So good. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and find the others now, if I can find my way out of here.
Okay, Luca is going in with the red pepper plants. <laughs> You are noisy, aren't you? So Rosanna has decided that she wants a single version of our swing bed. And Carlo is kindly making it for her with whatever he can find. As of today, we are allowed out for longer walks. So I've come up to the beautiful woodland walk that I like to do with Holly and we're going for our first walk in two months. I have just got back from my walk and this has happened. And this is the um, thermal cover so it will warm up the water hopefully. And Carlo has been busy making Rosella's bed frame. Hello. Hello. Is that your agenda? No. Carlo has just told me to call Rosella and get her to come here immediately. He has created a mini version of our bed for her. Hopefully she will be pleased. Rosella! <laughs> Ma non mi dire che già hai fatto. Io ancora devo comprare. Eh, aspettava a te. Siamo andati a cambusando. <ride> no, veramente. We are going out on our first family walk in two months. Carlo is getting a couple of sandwiches, which we're not officially supposed to do, but he's going to grab a couple of sandwiches in the store behind me, and we're going to go for a little walk up in the mountain somewhere. Just us. These masks are made by a shop called Luisa Positano. Giovanna has been making them for the last few weeks and she's been sending them out to all the local hospitals, um, whoever needs them. Uh, she will be making them this summer to match your bikinis and to match your outfits. And you can find them online at Luisa Positano. Holly is dashing around like a mad thing. Very excited to go for a walk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what about some of the baby with the <laughs> we have arrived at our destinated picnic spot. We will sit on this rock in the shade where it's nice and cool. This is the Non abbiamo portato il panino per te. Oh, che cattivi. So we got sandwiches made at the delicatessen and inside them is eggplant under oil, a slice of 
prosciutto and some fresh mozzarella. This is not a pubblicità. <laughs> We officially become a gathering. Gatherings are not allowed. These two guys have just come past with their dogs and they've stopped. It is quarter to seven in the morning and there is two people standing down there with their feet in the sea. And I'm on my way down there too, for the first time in probably about three months. Oh, sweaty. I was walking up from the beach and I thought I would stop off to see Cara's parents because obviously I haven't seen them for over two months and we are allowed to visit direct family and they are my direct family here in Positano so I'm just going to pop in and say hello with no hugs or anything. Parents, I didn't film anything because they were all in their pyjamas stood and they have given me a bag full of dry zinnia flowers to plant in the garden, which they said if I plant them now, they will flower this summer. So I'm gonna be doing that later. I'm now gonna slowly work my way back up and I think I'll stop off quickly at the cemetery and see Carlo because it's very close to where I am. So the gates are still closed. Cemetery is still closed. When are they gonna open? Uh, and when is it going to open full time? No, si ah, non si sa. Eh, uno qua messaggio bellissimo. Refreshing. <laughs> this is how Carla reads comments. Qu è Controlling my YouTube videos. No, non so come si legge questo, ma io la, la leggo così. Go! Another video, <laughs> great, thank you very much. <laughs> e quest'altro che dice One be friends. Vuole essere amico, no? Capito? <laughs> I am making my way home. Carla does make me laugh. He said, he said, oh, I remember that skirt from last year. I do like that skirt. You wore it quite a lot last year, didn't you? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> and I went, okay, fine. I actually bought it in February, and this is the first time I've ever worn it, but whatever. Okay. Today we are making a frittata di spaghetti. We're making a spaghetti cake, which is the classic recipe that mums will make when their kids going to the beach or if you're going up for a picnic. It is proper Italian picnic food. It is basically a spaghetti omelette. So what you need are some eggs, some spaghetti, some cheese and some salami or ham. I'm 
guessing ingredients. So I'm using four eggs, half a cup full of salami, about three quarters of a cup full of cheese and 200 grams of spaghetti. Um, and that should be enough for two to three people. We're going to cook the spaghetti for about 10 minutes uh, just so it's al dente, we don't want it overcooked. Um, we need it pliable enough to mix with the eggs and bend into the pan as well. Right, the important thing to do once the spaghetti is cooked is to cool it down because if you add the egg to it straight away, you're gonna get scrambled egg and spaghetti. So I'm gonna add the four eggs to the spaghetti. Give it a good mix. I'm going to do this with my hands because I can't figure out the proper way to do it, but I'm going to get half the spaghetti with the egg with my hands. And then put the cheese and salami on top of that. And then put the rest on. I'm sure there was an easy way to do that, but think straight at the moment. Just to even it all out and try and make it into like a big sandwich. So what you want is to leave it for about five to ten minutes so it gets nice and brown underneath. Then the difficult part is you've got to flip this so I might make sure it's not sticking. And now we have to cook the other one, so I'm going to slide that back. There we go. That worked. <laughs> so glad that worked. After about five minutes, you can check it. It's nice when it's cooked well underneath. You don't want it to burn. It's too much work. You want it crunchy. So you lift it out, put it onto a plate, and then you just cut it into slices like a cake. Wrap them up in, in um, cling film and send everybody out on their picnic. Yum. So I've, I've just filmed this. I'm doing it again because once I looked back at it, all I could see was the washing line behind me, which had a giant pair of Carlos box shorts and a pair of scrappy old jeans of sky blowing in the wind. So I've taken them down, I'm going to try again. I thought it'd be fun to talk about what I enjoy watching on YouTube, maybe give you some new channels to watch and for you to maybe leave me a couple of comments of what you watch and what you enjoy watching. If you found anybody that's interesting and you think I might enjoy them, let me know below. So my three favourite channels on YouTube are, and there is in no particular order, I'm saving, actually yes it is in a particular order because I'm saving the best for last. I really enjoy watching Sailing La Vagabond. Uh, you've probably watched them as well. Many, many people do. They've got over a million subscribers. They're an Australia, young Australian couple that have the most beautiful catamaran and they sail around the world. They've recently sailed Greta Thunberg across from America to Portugal and they are now stuck in Portugal because of the lockdown. But uh, I love watching their sailing adventures. Completely opposite end of the spectrum is Jonna Jinton. Now she is a Swedish artist. She's a poet, she's a musician, she's a painter, she's a writer, she's a videographer, she does everything. And she lives in absolute harmony with nature in the north end of Sweden. She has the northern lights, she has snow for over six months of the year. But um, I find her lifestyle absolutely beautiful, relaxing and lovely to watch. And my third one is a newer discovery. She's got much less followers than the other two. Stephanie Jarvis and the Chateau Diaries. Stephanie is about the same age as me. She's half English, half French. And with a couple of friends of hers, she bought the most beautiful chateau in France and she lives in it. And she has a whole host of characters in her vlogs. They make my vlogs look like the most boring thing to watch in the world. Once I've watched one of her vlogs and then watched one of mine back, I feel like mine are completely boring and flat and there's nothing happening. And it's just me wittering on. 
her vlogs are full of people and they're all real characters and they live in this most fascinating chateau. She is always happy and upbeat and smiling and just really, really cheers you up. And I highly recommend that you go and follow her. I'd love to go and visit her one day and if they ever open up the borders and we can get away and find somebody to feed the chickens, I might be driving down to France to go and stay in Stephanie's chateau because I think that would be amazing. Anyhow, those are my three favourite vlogs. Now let me know what you like to watch below because I'd love to have some new suggestions as well. So I think that's the end of the video for today. Thank you very much for getting to the end if you have done. Thank you for watching and thank you very much to all of my patrons for supporting me along this on, on this amazing adventure. I've just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is fantastic, but I'd love to keep going because that's nothing in the scheme of things these days. So thank you very much everybody for watching. There will be a, another couple of videos up in the week and I will see you then. Have a great week. Bye.